I'm going to have Dan hop on and talk a little bit about the national debt because that was a definite contributor to uh, what response took place last year. So yeah, it's it, it's really interesting because every time we do the the uh, market past and present, we take a look at where we are on the national debt. And if you've been with us long enough, you're seeing the numbers do this every single year, a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Well, last year wasn't any different. So we'll, we'll take a look at um, what went on last year from a national debt standpoint and what's driving it. And then also, you know, kind of where were we uh, last year or the previous year, 2019, in the, in the debt standpoint. So you can kind of see the rise between the two. So national debt, um, let's take a look at this. And I, I think we put this out, Rocky, uh, mid last year, we were talking about uh, the national debt and the debt over time. And, and what we were looking at with this chart was the debt held by the public as a percent of the gross domestic product. Um, so the GDP. And then what we did was we also overlaid the last six presidents over the mountain chart there, which is the debt. So what does this tell us? Well, you know, it tells you that in Reagan and Bush time, they had a pretty big increase. Clinton had, a, had the biggest decrease. Uh, GW Bush, yeah, a little bit higher at the end. Um, Obama, ooh, ouch. Uh, that was probably the biggest increase. Uh, you look at Trump, Trump was actually doing very, very good all the way up and through 2019. It wasn't until 2020 and the crisis hit that you saw a spike in the overall national debt. And then you can see now in 2021, it's now 102% of the GDP uh, when during Trump's time all the way up to 19, uh, he was at 79. So that's, that's a troubling thing when it comes to debt. But what's more troubling is where they're projecting the debt to GDP, where it's going in the future. And it does not look pretty if we don't make some major changes uh, moving forward. So where are we today? National debt, well, this is as of a few days ago, we're at uh, $28 trillion. That's uh, $85,000 per person. Uh, that means the baby that just got born today, well, they're starting out in the hole at $85,000. Uh, that's how bad it's gotten. If you look in the lower left-hand corner there, that was the 2020 or 2019 total at the end, and that was at 27 trillion eight five. So we we are continually moving forward from a national debt standpoint. And uh, guess what? The Piper's going to be paid here sooner or later. Here's something to think about: Why is the national debt so high? Well, think about the government spending, and and really think about your household. If you're bringing in income and you're spending less than you're bringing in, that means you're gonna have a savings, right? You save for a rainy day. Well, the government really from time to time does have to spend more than they're taking in, but eventually they gotta get back to that, uh, that situation where they're bringing more in than they're spending. Otherwise, the debt continues to get out of control. And what you can see in this chart, you've seen the ebbs and flows. In 2000, it was below um, a dollar relative to the spending. Matter of fact, it was around 85, 85 cents to every dollar that we were bringing in, we were spending. And it went as high as $1.75 in, in 2009, then started coming back down again. But you can see what happened in 2020. We literally spent a buck 92 for every dollar of revenues that were brought into the country. Uh, and that is in the form of taxes, the revenues that's coming into the country. Uh, so it, it's, it, it's a little bit taxing. We can't keep up with this for too long. We've got to have to get it under control. 
And what does that mean? It means that you have to do one of two things or both, probably both. You've got to get the economy moving very robustly. And once you have the economy robustly moving, you got to start raising taxes to some degree. And that is what's being anticipated here. Again, this is just another way to look at the other chart, revenues first versus spending in 2020. Uh, the total revenues coming in, again, taxes, uh, was 3.4 trillion. Total spending, 6.55. Uh, a little bit out of control, but that was to help keep the economy moving. You go back to 2019, again, the lower left-hand chart there, you've got uh, 3.4 trillion, 3.46, very similar to last year was brought in in revenues, but the spending was significantly less, albeit still over what we were bringing in. Uh, that's one of the things that's creating the, the, the potential problem. And um, one of the things I would, one of the things I would say, Rocky, is when you're, when you think about the debt, I, I had a, a, a client ask me yesterday, they said, you know what, you, you keep saying that, that taxes are gonna go up, but we're not seeing it happen right now. And, um, you know, one of the things I brought up with that client is, yes, it is already happening. And let me, let me explain this. About a year and a half ago, the IRS changed the rules relative to inherited IRAs. So what was the rule change? Well, we used to be able to do multi-generational IRAs. So if you had a large IRA, you could actually pass it on to the kids. They could keep it as an IRA, and then they could work a strategy to eventually get that down in a, uh, a reasonable manner. Well, what has changed? Well, what they've done is they've literally said, no, no, can't do that anymore. You have to have the assets liquidated in five years. So they've got five years now they have to liquidate that IRA. So think about it from a tax standpoint. Initially, we could have deferred, created a strategy and reduced in a, in a very systematic way that didn't cost a lot of money from a tax standpoint. Um, now what happens? Well, if I have a million dollar in inheritance of an IRA, and let's say I'm making 150,000 a year as the beneficiary, well, I have to get that million dollars out of that IRA within five years. So what does that do? It adds $200,000 of income to my $150,000 income every year for five years. Now, where did my tax bracket go? I just went from sitting at a 22% tax bracket and jumping up into the 32% tax bracket. So it is a raise in taxes any way you look at it. All they did was accelerate how you have to pay it. And because they accelerated it, they raised the taxes. So when you say it's not coming or it hasn't come yet, well, it's here today. They're already starting this process. Uh, they're doing it kind of stealthily, uh, which is very similar to what they've done in the past, but it is starting to occur. If you're a legacy client, you might want to have a plan for this. Otherwise, your kids could get whacked really bad when it comes to taxes when you pass away. So strategy is the key. It's what Rocky said in the beginning. It's not just the investments. It's how do you strategize? What kind of strategies of advanced planning do you put into place that allows you to mitigate this problem that's coming down the road and is already starting to occur at this point?